I made a video a few years ago on Trigger Time TV about road rage. And the road rage video is, you know, essentially something happens, right? Guy gets out of the vehicle, right? Comes up to your vehicle and he's a, you know, the guy I had was, I think, banging on the vehicle I was in with a tire iron. Hey man, dents can be fixed. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you can do anything you want to the car. It really doesn't matter. Modern times, what I didn't know was uh, the riots, people stopping on the highways, stopping traffic on the highways, right? And what do you do? So the truth is, is with the first video, I'm like, hey, you know, don't make eye contact, don't engage, right? You know, now you still want to watch the person, you still want to see what they're doing, but you really don't want to engage with them. So they'll get the hint that you're not interested and eventually get tired or the situation changes where you could just drive away. In modern times, because of these riots or where they stop on the highway, you can't just get away sometimes and what do you do? You know, and then there's guys that, uh, you know, I've trained recently who have been stuck in these protests on the highway. They have been, you know, gassed, even though they just happen to be there because this is the city they live in, right? And then what do you do in those situations? And what I wanted to do is just expand those conversations of, you know, hey, what would I do? And, you know, why do I think it's important? Right, so uh, I normally carry a backpack. I can I can get to it at all times, right? And you know I carry a few items in that backpack that I think will help me out of a situation, right? Um, and you know the items that I carry in the backpack is I carry a change of clothes. Why would I do that? Well, the change of clothes, you know, if you go and watch any of the riot or people leaving their vehicles, what'll happen is if the crowd picks you out and your vehicle out, let's say you get out of the car, you got on a white shirt. Everyone's like, hey, it's the guy in the white shirt. So I always carry a change of clothes. I always carry black. Why? Most protesters, most people in those situations are wearing black. You want to blend in as best as possible. So if they're saying it's the guy in the black hoodie and there's 70 guys with black hoodies, like it's going to be hard to single you out of the crowd. Now, as soon as I get away from the immediate area, turn a corner or whatever, I can take that off and go back to whatever I'm wearing, right? So I always carry some clothes. Um, I carry some gloves, right? Uh, gloves could help me like, I don't know, if glass breaks or anything like that, I would recommend having some gloves and putting some gloves on, right? Always handy to have gloves. Now, um, you know, I carry bear spray, right? So gloves will help get, keep from getting bear spray on my hands and me bear spraying myself, right? I also carry smokes, right? Smoke grenades where um, smoke grenades can get kind of hot. So that glove might allow me to hang on to one those second longer or keep me from getting burned. So I always carry gloves. Uh, and that's really the first layer of my backpack is gloves and the change of clothes. The next thing in my backpack is my gas mask and you know that gas mask if you use bear spray at all that gas mask is going to keep me from getting bear sprayed as well right and really um why bear spray because it's easy to get right is there other kinds of uh, cs gas out there absolutely right is police cs gas more potent yeah absolutely right however um bear spray it's easy to get and it's powerful enough now I use orange bear spray the reason I use orange is it'll mark the people I sprayed for positive identification as I'm trying to evade the situation also if someone was wearing a gas mask I can use it and I can I could ham I could take away their visibility right so even though they may not be breathing uh, CS right or the bear spray at least I'll take away their visibility to where they're either a have to take the mask off or B somehow wipe the lens clean or do something right either one of those 
gives the advantage to me, right? So I carry bear spray I, and it's orange. Now, having said that is uh, I carry smoke grenades and I carry orange smoke grenades, right? And here's the reason why I carry orange smoke grenades is um, bear sprays orange. So if I bear spray people and they start yelling gas and get away from my vehicle, when I throw the smoke grenade and it's orange as well, uh, it's a little psychological factor where they might think that smoke grenade is gas also. Now, you could also throw it out, throw the smoke grenade out and start yelling gas and the people will think it's CS, right? And they'll start running away. That could work as well. So it's a little kind of play, uh, psychological play there, but I carry the orange smokes. Now, you gotta know which way the wind's blowing, right? You gotta test the smoke before you throw it. The, the smoke's gonna give out a little bit of flame when it starts, before it starts smoking. So what I would say is open your sunroof, crack the window, put the flame out the window. Trust me, someone will back off because they don't wanna get burned. And what you wanna do is get a little smoke outside the vehicle to see which way the wind's blowing and then throw the smoke into the wind, right? That way the smoke clouds um, where you are. So when you get out of the vehicle, people may not notice and you might be able to get away before they notice that you actually got out, right? So the smoke just kind of obscures uh, people's vision enough for you to do what you gotta do. Now, you know, modern times, everyone's carrying a camera phone. I'm sure someone's recording it. If you flood around your vehicle with smoke and then you bear spray people, it might be harder to see on video, right? So, you know, again, another advantage to you, right? So that's kind of the things I carry. And I'm on the road all the time. And I got, you know, as I'm sitting in this truck driving from state to state, you know, I cover probably at least 20 states a year. I go through major cities. I have to think these things through. Now, I would say is when you get out of your vehicle, essentially you got to leave it behind, right? You could come back for it later, but... Uh, if you leave the vehicle behind, I would tell you, take the keys with you, right? Might get some windows broke, might get some damage to your vehicle, right? So what? Damage to the vehicle is not, you know, damage to you or your family. So let them have the vehicle. Let them ruin the vehicle. Who cares, right? You can get another one. So the vehicle is just to make sure that you don't get harmed. They can do anything they want to it. If you're going to leave the vehicle behind, what you need to do is um, take the keys and then make sure that you could come back later because what if the riots pass, right? Maybe in the next two or three minutes, you could come back, get in your vehicle and drive away, right? I say come back, right? So if you leave the vehicle, you don't wanna get too far, right? You don't wanna just leave it, leave the area, leave it on the highway because you know, it'll take you a little while to get it back. So, um, and the best thing you could do is get out and blend into the crowd, right? That's the yeah. best thing you could do. What would cause me to get out of the vehicle, right? I am in fear for my life. And generally speaking, that would start by someone breaking the windows, right? Someone breaks a window, they start coming in the vehicle. This might be a good way and a good time for me to start my exit. However, before it gets to that point, you should be leaning forward, have your stuff ready. So where if someone, you know, breaks a window, maybe you drop a smoke grenade inside your vehicle so they can't see what's going on in the vehicle. Maybe next you throw a couple out back or they break the window, you instantly go to bear spray. Right? What I'm telling you is there's no set pattern, right? And you need to be able to escalate according to whatever the situation throws at you. But I would say this, once they broke the windows and they're in the vehicle, right? This is where you or your family's personal safety, right? You got broken glass, you got all these things. This is where your personal safety starts the, you probably need to get out of here process to save your life or your family's life, especially in these mob-like situations.